Okay, so how do I keep track of what my students are doing when they're practicing mathematics? What I like to use is the documents feature here through Google. And you can see it up here in the tab feature, or you can search it and make an account. But when you get a home page, this is my home page right here, I want to create a new form. I find the forms very useful. What I can do is set up a form that asks students a bunch of questions and tells them if they get it right or wrong. And then when they're done, they give me the information so I know they finished it. Here's what I do. Let's try Pythagorean Theorem 1. So the Pythagorean Theorem, first of all, you want to number these because you're going to have a bunch of them. And you want to give a description. Find the hypotenuse when you are given the two legs. Sample question 1 should be the simplest. Let's say assume you assume you have a leg of oh boy of three inches and another of four inches. What is the value of the hypotenuse? Now one thing I should say here is assume you have a right triangle. I want to specify that triangle with a leg of three inches and another four. Okay, so now the help text we're leaving blank. This is clear enough. It's going to be a multiple choice question. We're getting rid of this extra sample. We don't need that. And this is a required question. We don't want them to be able to skip this question. The first answer I'll put is 25. It's a common mistake. You want to put common mistakes in here. Five is the right answer. Seven, students often just add the two legs and 14. Students, instead of squaring, as the Pythagorean theorem tells us to do, uh, might actually multiply by two. Now, we're not done yet. We want to say that you go to a page based on the answer, and this is the feature that I like. So if they pick the right answer, they go to the next question. If they pick the wrong answer, they go to a page that says, oops, you made a mistake. So you check this off. And it tells you here, oh, you can't do this yet because you haven't created any other pages. So let's create some other pages. Um, here we go to add item page break, that makes a new page. This would be the oops page. Oops, try again. And the description I use is click the back button, back button below, not the back button on your browser. Okay, and that's it. So that this gets into this page if they get the wrong answer. And the way we set that up is we click this pencil and we edit. So here, if they uh, pick 25, that's wrong, send them to the oops page. If they pick 5, that's right. We'll leave that blank for a moment. 7's wrong, oops page, and 14's wrong. So if they pick any of these choices, they get sent to the wrong page, to the oops page. Now, we'll come back to 5 in a moment. What I like to do is set up another page. And this would be, I'm not going to add a title here, because this page will just have another question. Add item, multiple choice. This is our second question. Make it a little bit harder. Assume you have a right triangle with a leg of 6 inches and another of 10 inches. What is the value of the hypotenuse? No help text. It's going to be multiple choice and required. We're going to also use the go to page based on answer feature. Okay. And we'll know that for now. They're just worried we don't have another page. So we'll come back to that. So the answer here is, uh, is 10. We'll put um, a common mistake first, 16, where they just, they just add, right, the two legs. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be 8 inches. So the first mis mistake would be. 14 inches, add those up, or double the 28 inches, 100 inches if they forget to take the square root, and then 10 inches. Okay, so here, if they pick these wrong answers, we send them back to the oops page. Oops, oops, and oops. And the 10 inches will come back to because we need to actually make a last page. So I can leave this as continue to next page, but I can't forget to make a final page. Because otherwise, where would they go after this? So done. Now, in our first question, we want to fix two things. Here, if they pick the right answer, 5, they don't want to go to the next page because that's the oops page. 
So put them to page three. That's the next question. So they can only go to the next question if they pick five. And in fact, let's put in inches here because we want to keep that unit of measurement in. Inches, inches, and inches. Okay, done. Last step is to add a final page. So add item, page break. And this time we do have a title. Awesome, you finished. And then description. If you are in Sean's class, right, or your own class, fill in the information below. So what do we want to ask them? Well now we want to ask them some text, which is what is their first name? This is not going to make required because they're only filling this out if they're in my class. And then last name. Oh, what did I just do? Sorry. Oops, I selected paragraph text by accident. No big deal. I just need another text. What's their last name? I asked these separately to help me sort it out in my spreadsheet. Last name. And then email. What is your email? Oops. And multiple choice. What class are you in? What class are you in? You know, class, email, and first and last names are great ways to sort out the student work in your spreadsheet. And last, we offer a paragraph text, which is any questions. That's it. So paragraph text text obviously just gives them more room to write. You might also want to um, actually edit the confirmation. That's something they receive at the end of your of your um, practice sheet. It just says thanks, but you could put links in here, advice, suggestions for next um, practice modules, anything you need to help students succeed. Um, so that's it, and it's saved already. So now we want to test it out to make sure that I actually didn't make any mistakes, which I often do. But so here at the bottom, you can view the published form. This is the link. And this is what it looks like. It's the plain theme. You can change. You can change the theme. There's all kinds of nice ones out there. It's right up here. You can change the theme. Um, and let's try this two-question practice set. Oops. So the first question is 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 correct if we choose five. So let's pretend we get it right. Five. Great. Next question. Ten. Great. It worked. My name's Sean. Eric. Hello. Email Sean teaches at gmail.com. Class I'm in. Any questions? No, nope, leave a blank. Submit. It says thanks. Your response has been um, recorded. So now let's actually try again. This time, let's just test it. Did I, if I get it wrong, I go to seven inches, right? Oops, try again. Click the back button below, not the back button. So hit back. Uh, 14. Oh, go back. 25. Go back. Okay, hit five. Yay. Now hit 100. Oops, go back. 28. Oops, go back. Keep trying. One more. 14. All right, so everything works. And now we hit 10 inches. Great. Now it'll be Ted, Ted, Ted. All right, different student. And we'll look at the results. Nope. Submit. Thanks. So now, what do you see as a teacher? Well, if we go to our homepage, the, the docs homepage, here's the, the form we just created. And now what it pops up is a spreadsheet, and there you can see what was actually just submitted. Right? The timestamp, the answers they gave, the names, emails, class, all that stuff to sort and help them. Notice for Ted, the only disadvantage here, and, and one thing I hope to develop pretty soon, uh, Khan Academy does this really well, uh, but here, Ted, we don't know that he got questions wrong, so perhaps we could ask them uh, which questions did you get wrong initially. That might be helpful, and they could tell us uh, which questions or how many questions did they get wrong. But anyway, that's a basic run-through, and I hope this helped.